Hey there. What's up? How's it going? All right, look, you need text, okay? There, said it. I know what you're thinking. Uh, text. <laughs> Who needs it? But you know, it doesn't have to be boring like that. There are lots of cool things you can do with it. Trust me. I'm, I'm telling you this. Just trust me on this. And by the way, uh, hey, Dr. Doodle here again. Welcome to number two. Video number two of my programming series. Which, if you're following after the last one, which was actually the first one. Well, we're going to, you'll see. I'm going, we're going to carry over what we did last time to this time. It'll be great. It really will. Trust me. Hang on just a second. You're going to love this. See there? Like I told you. Groovy, huh? Bouncing around the screen like an idiot. Anyway, the Murphy, like I told you last time, doesn't have to be just a bunch of lines that are bouncing around the screen. You can put text there or images, and we'll get to that in another time. But let's, let's take a look what makes this ticker. All right, here we go. Hang on a second. All right, now, much, uh, those of you who saw my last video should recognize much of this code, but those who are new here, hey, how's it going? Uh, let me just go through this line by line and then give you the heads up what's going on here. So now this first line, you see a blinky, blinky, blinky. That's the clear screen command. It's clear in the screen uh, to start our program, so we're ready to go. Now we've got x1 equals 10, y1 equals 10, etc. These are all variables that we're setting up to tell the, the, the QBasic where to print the text. Now, if, if you look, we got X1, X2, X3, Y1, Y2, Y3, H1, H2, H3, V1, V2, V3. As with the last video, uh, X1 and Y1, they represent the location of our first line of text. And H1 and V1 are the direction. We'll get to that too. Uh, but X2 and X3, they're all, th these lines here represent the second and third well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, here we got text equals, hey there. That's what you saw bouncing around the screen. And if you notice, text here has got that dollar sign. When you create a variable, a QBasic generally assumes that it's going to be a num numeric variable, an integer or a floating point or something. If you want to do text, it's known as a string variable because you you string together a bunch of letters. Well, you don't uh, denote that by putting a dollar sign here. So we got text, dollar sign. That tells QBasic, all right, this is gonna be a string variable, text, and equals, that's how we set it to whatever we want, then, hey there, in quotation marks, gotta have them guys there. That is going to be the text that is printed on the screen. Now we got the do loop. If you remember from last time, that's the start of the do loop that loops around over and over and over again until something happens. Uh, the, so basically the beginning of the program. Then the clear screen, which clears it again each time, so it'll, it'll, it clears the screen. You get it. Now, if X1 is less than 2 or X1 is greater than 69, then H1 equals H1 times negative 1. What's all this? Well, X1 and yeah, X1 here is the horizontal position where the first line of text will be printed. And if it's less than 2, then it's too far over this way. If it's more than 69, too far over that way. So we take H, which is the horizontal direction, and multiply by negative 1. As before, anytime you mo multiply anything by negative 1, it stays the same, but the sign changes. So if H1 is, is positive, then X1 equals X1 plus H1 and it adds one. If it's negative, it subtracts one, moves to the right, or left, excuse me. That, that's right and that's left, in case you weren't, weren't aware. Y1, same thing for the vertical. And if Y1 is less than two, then it's too high. If it's greater than 22, it's too low. Then V1 equals V1 times negative one. So the, the direction variable changes back and forth and forth and back. Now here's where we calculate x1 equals wherever it is plus the direction. So if it's here, the positive moves to the right. If it's there and it's negative, then h if h1 is negative, moves to the left. Same with y, which is vertical. y1 is y1, whatever wherever it is now, plus v1, the direction. So if it's here and it's negative, well then it's going to go up. If v1 is positive, it's going to go down. Color 15, it just sets it to white, white text. Then we locate X or Y and X. Now notice, 
with a piece set, we had x first, then y. With locate, it's different. You got y first, then x. In other words, the vertical position, and then the, the horizontal position. x1, y1, so the, the first variable up here. And print text. Groovy, fair enough. Now this next part here, if I could scroll down just a shade. Do, 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 do. Scroll on down, damn you. There we go, yeah. Okay, x2, same thing. It's for the second line of text. Uh, it, wherever x2 happens to be, if it's less than 2, then it'll change the horizontal direction from left to right, or right to left, whichever. Same thing, except this time, color is 7, which is a, a light gray, I guess. And then locate y2, x2, and print text again. Then, finally, x3, same thing, only this time with color 8, which is a darker gray. And for z, now this is interesting here. For z equals 1 to 3,000 next t. This, this is known as a for next loop. Why for next? You take a variable that you're not using in the moment, in this case z, which is just going to be a counter, and this tells it for z, start at 1, end at 3,000. So it's just going to go loop through here, ding, 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 for next, for next, for next, for next, 3,000 times. Why? Just to waste time. As otherwise, it's going to be zipping around the screen so quick you won't be able to see it. I could slow down DOS box, but that's, I'm too lazy. Then we got our famous loop command here, which loops while in key. Again, like last time, there's those are uh, quotation marks. No space there. Can't have no space. And we'll try this here and see what happens. Run, start. All right. So here is, you saw the first X1, Y1. Well, that's the bright, that one or the white one. Then X2, Y2 is the gray one. X3, Y3 is the darker gray one. So each time through the loop, it prints the dark, the, the bright, the gray, and then the dark gray, clears the screen, recalculates everything, does it again. Yeah, okay, well, pretty boring, I, I get you, but it's it's something you can do with text that you probably didn't know. Uh, but there's all, I mean, this is just simple text. You can have all kinds of crazy things going on, and I'll show you another little trick later on. But let's go through this again, just so we're clear on everything. Boop! Yeah. All right, so back up to the top. As I mentioned before, clear screen. This is just to prepare everything. Here we're setting up all our variables, which uh, we'll get to variables in another video. But basically, it's a, it's a whole a placeholder for a value that you don't know what it is. So we set x1 equals 10, colon y1 equals 10, colon h1 equals 1, colon and v1 equals 1. Same with all these. Uh, but just if you notice, this is 10, so it's what. 10 spaces over the right, this is 9 spaces over the right, this is the red 8 spaces to the right, and that's why you get them following each other, 1, 2, 3. They're literally printed one line behind each other. And then when they hit the various uh, boundaries, they move back, so the, here's the first one, here comes the second, it hits the boundary, moves up, and then the second one comes up after it. Boom, simple. Same idea. Now we get to the, the do, again, start of the program. Here's clear screen, which clears out all the nonsense that was there before from the first loop. And again, we test if x1 is less than 2. Now here we got to be less than 2, not less than 1, because less than 1 is 0. And if you try to locate someplace at 0, it's going to flip out and you're gonna, it's going to ruin your day, basically. So if it's less than 2, that means it's 1. And if it's 1, then it's too far to the left, so we multiply h1 by negative 1 make it instead of negative we turn it back positive and here it starts adding the positive up if it gets over if it's greater than 69 it's too far to the right and then we multiply by negative one which turns the direction back to the left negative one back and forth same thing with the vertical up and down d d d d d d d like that here's where it makes all the, the calculations x1 equals x1 wherever it is now plus the direction we well, spoke about that already y1 equals y1 plus the direction same thing color 15 that's the bright white and then locate and print the text so we'll run this again just to bore you a little more there you go hey there but here's another groovy thing uh hang on just a second let me bring up another piece of code just don't go nowhere all right because i'm not going anywhere you just hang on there I did not tell you test could be fun. Check this out. We got, this says my third program and my third program is just changing colors and like that. But check out how it's, it's like a train. Woo -woo. And it's scrolling. I guess they call this the marquee. And I'll show you how this is done. Pretty simple. But it's, it's a neat trick. You, uh, you put it somewhere in a program just to add interest or catch someone's attention. So here we go. Boop. All right. Uh, now, 
Let's see here if I remember how this works. Okay, well, starting at the top here, we've got text again. This is a, a string variable, a, a text variable. So it's text with a dollar sign there equals my third program. That's what's going to show up on screen. We clear the screen and then the do and loop. This is our whole program right here. Right here. Well, we got this little bit. This is kind of groovy. That's a, a, a subroutine, and I'll talk to you about that as well. So the first letter of then we're going to start a new two new variables. One's first letter, the other's other letters. What this does, mid, it looks in the middle of a piece of text, in this case my third program, and it selects, again, in this case, we're looking at this variable, text, we're looking for the first character, and we're looking for one character. So that tells it where to start looking, and this tells it how many characters look to look for. So it looks at the first character, boop, M, and stuffs that into first letter. Now other letters, that's another variable with the mid command again, Again, looks in the middle of this text. Here, we're looking at text variable, the second letter, which is Y, and 18 of them. So 18 letters from here, including the spaces. Got to have spaces in there. So what we're doing is we're separating the first letter into first letter variable, and then other letters into other letter variable. Now check this out. Here's the magic. Here's, here's what all happens. Now we take our text variable, which started out like that, we're going to change it. We're going to text equals other letters plus first letter. Let's see what's happening here. If it was first letter and then other letters, it'd be the same thing. No changes. But here we're taking the first letter, tacking it on the end, and stuffing it back in text. So now if we looked at this, it'd be Y, third program, M. And each time it goes through the text, it grabs what happens to be the first letter, rips it off, stuffs it on the end. Because text equals other letters and then the first letter. Got that? I know it's confusing, but basically this, this variable here becomes all of this minus the first letter. This one's just the first letter, and it tacks it on the end. Now, CC, we'll get to that in just a moment, but you notice locate 10, print text. Whatever the text happens to be at the moment will be printed right there. And then next time through the loop, it alters it, throws that first letter boop, back here, and prints it again, and then boop, prints it again. Now CC, I'm using that as a temporary variable. In this case, it, it stands for color change. We're taking CC, which starts at zero, and it equals zero, zero plus one. So whatever it is, we're adding one to it. Simple enough. Now, if CC, color change, is greater than 18, then we set it back to one, and go sub, change color. Check this out, go sub. This is a subroutine. It's a little, little piece of code tucked on the end that we want to have out of the way. And it's nice because if we needed to call a subroutine anywhere in the program, we can set this, this routine to do whatever it needs to do and then call it whenever we need it. So what's change color? Well, as the name implies, it changes the color. We've got C equals C plus one, just like before, it's adding one to C. If C is 15, that's white, then C equals one. So it resets it down to one and color equals C. Color sets the, chain, the color of the text. I probably should have mentioned that, but hopefully it's, it's quite self-evident. And then we re return. So here we go. We start, do, we take the first letter, strip it off. We take the other letters, set them out. And now we take the original text variable and change it. We put the, the last letters first, first letter last. Now C equals C plus one. And what happens there is if C is greater than 18, in other words, if it's been through the loop 18 times, printed the whole text, then we go sub to change color. And change color adds one to C, and tests what the value is, then sets the color to C, one through 15. And that's, uh, well, you'll see the colors, but anyway, every time this becomes 18, like 18 times through this loop, change color happens, and you see the text change color. So let's run this, boom, boom. Again, notice this is printed in the same same relative location, but first there's my third program, and then you see it with the Y, and then the space, and then the T for third. It's grabbing that first letter of the text, slamming it on the back. And each time, 18 loops, 18 characters, that's including spaces, 18 characters. Each time it goes through, it changes the color. That's what the CC is for, the subroutine. After 18 times, it calls CC to change the color, and that's what you get.
now what if we combine the two i'm not going to do that it'll be too complex but it's all these techniques can build upon each other you could have this scrolling around the screen and bouncing and changing colors and whatever your crazy twisted mind comes up with but um so there's some text yeah and hope you enjoyed this program let's just take another quick look again we got well we got text this is a string variable Ends with a dollar sign, so it tells QBasic that this is going to be text, not not uh, numbers or very um, yeah numbers, mathematics that sort of thing. So we clean this, clear the screen, start our do loop, uh, loop while in key again. Now, for those who didn't see, loop is pretty itself evident. It starts at the do, loops back to do, loops back to do, loops back to do, only while in key equals nothing. So in key, now typically there's the input command if you want to enter someone's name or address or whatever. You type all your stuff in, hit enter, and it takes in information. In key is immediate. The minute you hit any key, oh, I didn't mean to do that. The minute you hit any key, it sends that information to QBasic. And it says while in key is nothing. In other words, while no characters are pressed, not even the space bar, as long as nothing is pressed, just keep looping, keep looping. The minute you do press something, then it drops out of the loop to system, which ends the command. And I want to point out, like before, that is not going to work because that's a space there. It We don't notice it, but QBasic knows that's a space. So it's already, you want to hit, it, basically it says that there's a space there or some, it's got some length, put it that way. So we want to make sure that these uh what are these? Quotation marks. There's no space between them. And then start with the text, clear the screen, start the do loop. Our first letter is stripped off using the mid command, which, by the way, you go to, look here, check this out. Mid, help, and see here, it's got mid right there because we, we highlighted it with the mouse. If you click on this, look at there. Cubase has got built in to help for all this stuff, so it'll help you. What characters will I put in first? Well, this will tell you. You start mid, and it... it returns part of a string a substring this is the variable that you're taking the text from it could also be a literal you could put quotation marks in there and say hey how's it going but in this case they're using an expression or a variable that's the start and the length like we saw before so down here to uh no nope. escape let's get out of there but yeah any one of these these commands mid uh locate uh, for loop system you can just click on help system and yeah get all kinds of stuff closes all files returns control of the operating system so that's that uh, escape but i think that's all i got to say for it to you for now next time uh yeah well how about this next time we're gonna do drawing something a little more interesting than just docs and text and maybe throw a little noise in there why not okay later bye have fun programming. And as before, you know, mess with this. Change this around. What if I turn this to 300 instead of 3,000? What happens? Whoa, a whole lot quicker, huh? This uh, for next loop is used for a lot of things as well. And we'll get into those in the future too. But you can change colors. You can change the text. Like, let's try this. My name is Dr. Doodle. Okay, let's see what happens now. It might be too many characters. Run, start. Yep, too many. Well, we'll just space this out here. You see what's happening here is I have more characters that I'm that I'm stripping out. So what I want to do is here instead of 18 letters, we'll make it. I don't know. Try 20. Probably still not enough. Uh, 22. Getting there. 23. Alright, my name is Dr. Doodle. There you go, changing color and everything. Hey, look, we interrupt this video because we can. Well, listen, though, I'm not going to beg you to like, subscribe, none of that. Do what you want. But here's the thing. You need to...
comments, okay? Put comments down here. Just tell me what kind of stupid thing I've done wrong. Hey, dummy, how about this or how about that? I don't know these things unless you tell me what you need to know. So comment like that. Bye. Back to the video. So there you go. Enjoy that. Play with it. Have fun. And bye. Have fun programming. What?